What is up, everybody? Logan coming at you guys with a new video here today. And we're at 75 wins in a row with the strategy, but we do have a roll on today. And the roll is currently at the money, which is pretty helpful for us. But uh, before we get into the actual trades, a couple support levels here. So we have 44.85. Uh, we're pretty bullish above 44.85. If we miss and fall through that, we'll head to 44.20 on the ES. These are the ES levels. Uh, we ran towards 45.25 today and could not get through it. So I'm expecting 44.85 to kind of be that base point where maybe we head back to um, try to base back there before going back towards 45.25. Some other people think that we're going straight to 45.25 tomorrow to retest it again and just keep on going with the bull run off the CPI information. You know, I'm not feeling too much pressure with this trade. And I wanted to make this video where we kind of go over what it looks like to be in a roll. So SPX closed at 44.72 today. Uh, and we're at 44.70 at the moment. So, you know, two points in the money, it's cash settled. You don't have to worry about anything. And we size pretty well and consistent uh, with that 6% of the portfolio every time we do these trades. Uh, the VIX today also threw up all over the place. It was down almost 9% today. Uh, so if we go over to the Discord, because we're talking about this expected move math, right? Uh, if we come over here, 44.72.16 is our most recent chart to read here. Uh, so tomorrow we have a 23 point expected move, which is super small. So overall, like those seem like pretty solid price levels that I just went over in my checklist for where you should kind of expect the market to go on either side. But if we go over some trades and if you guys would like to join the Discord, the link is down below in the description. Come trade with us. Uh, we had a couple of trades work out pretty well that I didn't mention in the last one. The 44.75, 44.85 worked. Uh, and then we also had, this was the trade that we added Monday, 55 credit. We rolled it for a 30 debit. Uh, some people actually got pretty decent credits on the roll because the market continued to fall after I rolled. Uh, so I saw, you know, a dollar out there, um, 55 cents for a lot of people. So they're, they're able to add their credits, right? Cause you keep your 55 cents or your 50 that you first added and then whatever credit you get after that for the roll. But I paid a debit. So I'm still only up 25 cents. So every once in a while, these trades do get tested and overall, like I don't like to be in a condor and we're going to CPI. That's what this is about. But overall, like that's just expected. I think we go over that a lot in our expectations and why sizing properly is always the way to go because the market gets really tough to handle if you're ever oversized, um, especially in options, right? Because with options trading, it's really easy to quickly over leverage yourself. And I see a lot of people doing that from a confidence standpoint where maybe they win 20 trades in a row or uh, they have a really good return overall in their portfolio for the year. So they're like, oh, I can be even riskier before I get back to break even. Where I think overall, like everybody fights their own battles with that in their head. But if you're able to stay super consistent and disciplined with the same sizing and you find a strategy you can stick to, I feel like you can be pretty consistent with the markets, even if you're doing all different types of strategies. But that's always been my approach with the markets, hence the big win rate. So we did roll this trade. Uh, we get to see tomorrow how this works out. We're at 44.70, 44.80 on the call credit side. Um, overall, you know, I thought we were going to stay at 4,400 a little bit longer, but this market had other ideas after I placed that trade on Monday. Uh, when we were on this 44.07 zone, it had Tuesday was pretty calm. You know, I should have in hindsight, just made the trade to go till Tuesday. Uh, and then CPI today definitely didn't help. And then we full, filled those ro uh, rolls on this dip here. Um, so if we go back to the checklist, did we have that gap up or that gap down today? And we actually gapped up right towards our strike. So there is that open gap back here at 44.39. Whether that fills tomorrow or maybe it takes a week, it could even take a month to do so. 98% uh, of gaps on the S&P end up getting filled. So that is something to kind of keep in mind. You know, anytime we have that possible turnover, that maybe the gap's just filling and it's nothing to, you know, write home about and liquidate all your positions because the gap's filling. But that also depends what side of the trade you're on, too. So, heading back to the checklist, the VIX, we did talk about the VIX. That thing threw up all over today, down 9%. If you take a look at the last five days, we got up to 17. And since then, it's just been a rocky roller coaster downward. 
uh, back towards the lows, right? The low was 13 back in June 22nd. It did spend a lot of time gaining a little bit more momentum until today. All of that just got rug pulled. Um, you know, and I like to, I'm a big fan of reading the VIX as far as like a confirmation tool. And personally, you know, whenever it gets down here, this is kind of the time to look for it to start to ramp back up again. You know, it's been going down for just a few days, but that's what the VIX likes to do, right? It slowly goes down over time, but when it starts to base at certain levels and now that the volatility is low, the market really doesn't move too much. That's when it's a good time to start looking at volatility picking up, maybe getting on the call credit side. And then when you see it start to flush down again, like back here, that's a great time to be on the put credit side, right? Because you're getting all of that premium capture uh, just over time and from price action movement as well. So three to five days, red or green. Uh, that's one thing I misread a little bit. We were actually on, if we look at the last five days here, We'd actually been declining quite a bit, right? Like one, two, three. And I expected us to have one more red day. And ever since I put that trade on, it was just boom, boom, boom. Uh, two pretty solid green days up. So if I would have just taken a step back and maybe opened my mind a little bit more to the idea that we could pop right back up off the CPI information instead of hovering at 4,400, which I thought we were going to do here then I would have had a little bit of a better read on that specific trade. But, you know, every once in a while, we got to get the direction wrong at some point. I did go over our levels a little bit ago, right? Then I'm looking at 44.85 on the ES and then 45.25. I think, yeah, we were around that 4,500 mark quite a bit today as well on the ES. So we'll probably fight around there. But as far as pulling back, that 44.85 is probably a pretty solid support level as well, where I'll look at... Hedging with a put credit spread, getting one that's out of the money as well, below that gap and everything. Um, position sizing, I talk about that 6%. That's, you know, for me at least, and I, I would say for a lot of traders, like that 6% really gives you a lot of confidence in what you're doing because you're not you're not risking such a small amount that you don't feel like what you're doing is worth it. Like some guys who do 1% of their portfolio or 2%. Um, and they're, you know, I've even talked to a guy this week who said he was uh, doing these trades with less than a percent of his portfolio and that he was excited to scale up to two to three. So, you know, some of the guys who have larger amounts of capital, you know, maybe under a percent is a lot of fun to you still. Um, but I know I, like for me, I like that 6%. So I can still be a little bit more aggressive, but not like 20%, 15% and really send in the portfolio. Trade timing. Uh, today we end up rolling when we got that pull down. I actually thought we were going to head towards the gap fill there, but uh, the market makers did not. We did actually come back to close within the expected move from the previous day too, which is really interesting. Uh, the strikes I went with, those 4470s, I thought we were going to be a little bit more solid for today. Uh, if I was at 4480, I would have let that position ride for a decent amount of time, but Overall, I was kind of stuck in between both support and resistance. So uh, at this point, it's more about reducing our risk as much as we can to get out of the trade. Um, also look at hedging. That'll help us like grab more credit. And then if you did get a credit roll today, that's another really nice benefit as well. Risk management, we do a lot of rolling, hedging, and then um, I'll even look at possibly stopping out of the position too at some point if we get a decent time to do that depending on what the levels are and what time of the day that is too. And then we talked about expectations, right? Uh, like I had mentioned before, I expect a loss to come soon. Uh, we still haven't seen one yet, which is really cool. And 75 wins, get a roll in to throw that into a new strike price, pay a little debit to do that. So overall, like on the total uh, strategy, everything is still up and up. And this is just part of the process. And I think this is when you learn the most as a trader about yourself and also like, how you feel emotionally and how to set your expectations for trading, as well as just having a good head on your shoulders when it comes to managing so that you don't just get discouraged. But that's going to be everything for me in this video. I really appreciate all the support. And if you guys would leave a like, a comment and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.